Slack versus Discord, which is the right platform for you and your community? Well, in this video, I'm gonna walk through six key areas to help you make the right choice for you. Now let's start out with familiarity. When building any kind of community, you ideally wanna use a platform that's fairly well known to your target audience. Now this is where Slack and Discord are really quite different. Slack is very well known in the business world. It's used by a variety of different types of businesses and different users inside of those businesses. But Discord is a little bit more specialist. It's very well known by gamers and developers and technical people, but outside of that, it's a little bit less known. Now this kind of delineation is not hard and fast. You need to make the right choice for your specific audience, but let me give you a set of sample audiences and which platform I would use for those target audiences. For executives, I go Slack. For gamers, I go Discord. For technical developers, I go Discord. For marketers, I go Slack. And for general consumers, Frankly, I would not go with either of these because general consumers are probably gonna be better off in a forum or a Facebook group or something like that. Now let's move on to simplicity. How easy to use is Slack versus Discord? And this is another area where the two platforms really differ quite a bit. As a general rule for most users that I've ever seen, Slack is pretty straightforward to use. You've got a bunch of channels, you can go and type into those channels, you can use emojis, you can add videos, you can add links. It's pretty straightforward to use. But Discord, on the other hand, is a whole different deal. There's a lot more in Discord when it comes to flexibility and functionality. You've got all these different panes with, you know, lists of users and channels and people are often, you know, dumping tons of emojis in there and there's multiple pop-ups and screens appear when you use Discord. So as a general rule, I would say that Slack is a lot easier to use for most users than Discord. Now, again, this is gonna depend a little bit on your audience, right? If you're focusing on a technical audience or a more sophisticated audience, then the fact that Discord is a little bit more complicated to use maybe isn't that big of a deal. Now, let's move on to setup and administration. How easy or complicated is it to set up Slack versus Discord? Which is which? Now, the good news is that setting up Slack and Discord is pretty simple. You just go and register an account, you spin up a workspace, and boom, you're off to the races. Where it gets a little bit different is when it comes down to integration in inside of a business and also any security features that you might require. Now, when it comes to integration inside of a business, both Slack and Discord have the usual things that most companies are looking for. They have two-factor authentication, the traffic is encrypted, the single sign-on, et cetera, et cetera. But where there is a big difference is when it comes to key security features. Slack is much further ahead than Discord in that. Slack can be used and configured for HIPAA compliance, SOC 2 and 3, uh, CSA, EU, uh, US Privacy Shield, whereas Discord, it's kind of behind the times when it comes to this stuff. And frankly, just researching this in the first place, I find it much more complicated to get concrete answers on Discord versus Slack. So if you're gonna need those security features, you are definitely gonna wanna go Slack. Now, if you wanna build an amazing community around your product or service, you wanna build consistent growth and engagement, you should totally check out my community, Leadership Core Accelerator. So we provide hands-on coaching, training, and accountability. It's all tailored directly to your company, and it helps you to deliver really clear, consistent results every single quarter with way less stress and anxiety. If you're interested in this, check out the link in the video description down there where you can book a call with us and we'll listen to what you want to achieve, what some of the challenges you're having, and we'll provide you some really concrete next steps inside of that call. Now let's talk about audio and video features. Now, let me be frank with you. 90% of your community members, 90% of the time, are probably going to be just chatting to each other with text, and both Slack and Discord are excellent at this. I suppose it's to be expected. But both Slack and Discord have dedicated audio and video features that you might want to consider. Now, Slack is way simpler when it comes to this. Sure, you can add pictures and you can upload videos and you can upload audio to uh, conversations and to, to discussions. And it does have audio calls and video calls. And it works generally pretty fine most of the time. But frankly, in most of the Slack workspaces that I've ever worked in, people don't tend to use those audio and video features. But Discord has a whole other feature called Discord Stages, which Slack doesn't have an equivalent to, which is where you can run online events right within your Discord community. Now, the Discord Stages feature is great. However, I've heard from some members of my Community Leadership Core Accelerator, as well as other folks, that it's a little bit wonky at times. So my recommendation when it comes to audio and video is you don't do any of it inside, inside of Slack and Discord, and instead use separate platforms for this. Now, if you want to run interactive, engaging community events where your members are going to be, you know, talking with their mic and have their video cameras on, then I frankly, I'd go Zoom. Zoom is just the best platform for that. But if you want to run a one-to-many event, such as a webinar or a workshop, where you're going to be primarily broadcasting outwards and people are just watching and maybe interacting with, with text chat, then I'd go Webinar Jam. 
Both Zoom and Webinar Jam are tools that I use myself. I love them, they do a great job, so go check those out. So now let's talk about integrations because your Slack or your Discord are not living in an isolated environment. You're gonna be using a whole bunch of other tools that you might want to integrate with your communities. This might be Google Docs or Sheets, it could be Coder or Notion, it could be Zoom, it could be Rewatch, it could be any number of different types of platforms. Now when it comes to the simplicity of setting up an integration with another platform and just the sheer range of options when it comes to integrating with other platforms, Slack wins the day here. There's thousands of integrations out there and it's super easy to get up and running. Discord on the other hand, bit of a pain in the backside because you generally have to use bots for this. It's a little bit more complicated and it's a little bit finickier to get set up and running. Why are you making this so difficult? But frankly, I wouldn't worry too much about this integrations question. If you choose Slack or Discord and it integrates with the tools and services that you're using, then great. But if not, there are tools like Zapier that you can use, which is basically a massive library of tools that you might use in the world, like Google and Cloudflare and ConvertKit and whatever else. And you can pretty much glue them together in any, in any way you can think of. So if the integration story with Slack or Discord isn't right for you, then just go Zapier. All right, so let's dig into our final area here, which is pricing. Huh, we have to pay? Now, the good news here is that both Slack and Discord have free plans, and you can actually do an awful lot with both of those free plans. Now, in terms of how much you can do with both of those free plans, you can definitely do a lot more with Discord. But the free plan on Slack is comprehensive enough where you can build a really pretty significant sustainable community without spending a penny. But how does the pricing work here? Well, with Slack, it's basically per user pricing that you pay every month, right? So you pay, it's about $7 a month uh, as I record this video right now. And there are a set of features that are available, like you get expanded and improved analytics. You can see uh, uh, history that goes beyond three months. And there's a bunch of other perks that you get as well. Now, Discord doesn't really have per user pricing. Instead, they've got some programs available called Nitro Basic and Nitro that you can think of are kind of like upgrades to the overall Discord server. Now, is it worth paying for Slack and is it worth paying for Discord? It really depends on what your needs are. But I can tell you one thing for sure, that if you're going to pay for Slack, it's going to be a lot more expensive than paying for Discord. So now we've been through all of those six areas. So what's my overall conclusion here and my overall set of recommendations? Well, put simply, it really depends a lot on who your specific audience is and what you want to accomplish. But I will break it down like this. If you want a simple, reliable chat platform that's good for general purpose audiences, the kind of folks who are just going to be generally working in businesses, then Slack is a great solution for you. However, if you want to hot rod your community, if you want to do a lot more with bots and you want a lot more in terms of features and you want to address very specific audiences such as gamers, developers, engineers, technical people, then Discord is a great solution. Now to illustrate this point between Slack for kind of general business users and Discord for more technical users, a good example of this are my members in my Community Leadership Core Accelerator. I would say that the vast majority of my members who are focused on technical engineering developer audiences, vast majority of them are using Discord. However, my members that are focused on kind of high level executive or marketing or general user audiences, they tend to use Slack as well. So that's it. Hopefully this video was useful in guiding your thinking when it comes to Slack versus Discord. But remember, it really does depend on your specific audience and what you want to achieve. If you've got any questions about this, be sure to get them down into the comments and let me know where you sell. Did you decide on Slack? Did you decide on Discord? Who is your audience? Why did you make that decision? Would love to check it out. See you soon.